Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Fortnite video here on the channel. Now this is the second one that I've actually recorded today. If you haven't watched the previous one where I discussed the new Falcon Scout item and the new Week 7 Unusually Utilitarian Challenges, then go check those out. But in this video we are going to be discussing the um, Oathbound Part 2 quests that have released today. Now I've done most of them before this video begins, I will be doing the last little bit on this video. But with the first video, we've made contact with the new Rift Warden Stellan, and he's told us that he's making a Rift Gate, a stable bridge to new realities, which is almost ominous. We've then gone and helped him construct it a little bit further, and once we've helped him construct it and calibrated it, he says, I have my own reason to create it, but you have no reason to know those yet. Help me more, and I may be more forthcoming. Then in the second quest, we've helped him by aligning the island with the cosmos using star sensors and a cosmic monitor. And once we've done that, he tells us, I will choose to trust you with a secret I've never told. There is a being, a shapeless man. He watches us with dark purpose. If we do not finish the rift gate, the consequences will be terrible. This shapeless man, this being that watches us, is a being we are familiar with from the Chapter 3 storyline, and it is the Nothing. So, we have discussions about the Nothing still watching us. Yeah, a shapeless man. Then in Quest 3, we've made contact with Amy, and she seems a little bit suspicious of Rift Warden Stellan, and so we collect some objects to use as test vessels and she says that if the calculations are correct Stellan has officially harnessed into reality travel which seems bad and we're now on quest 4 so for quest 4 we've made contact with Amy again and we're now go we've now got some test Amy's that we're going to send through our test rift that we have set up over at Brutal Bastion so we're going to go down there now and we're going to go and send these three test vessels through and then for the third and final stage of um, Quest 4, we've got to go and collect those vessels again. So we've got to go and recover them and observe the results. And it is the results that I'm particularly eager to show in this video because it does seem like it's going to be very, very off, um, like ominous. So without further ado, let's go down and go and check. So it is here at Brutal Bastion that you've got the test rift, so make sure that when you're doing this quest that's where you come. But by the looks of it, it's sort of in the centre of Brutal Bastion, which does make this quest a little bit more difficult. So... Let's uh, go and investigate. And hopefully not get killed. An awful lot of people here. Now I really do not intend on dying before I've done the quest, so Once we've sent all three through, you've just seen how simple it was, you just have to interact with all three items. You then have to go and recover those items. Now those items are dotted around the map, so to get them, you're going to have to follow your map a little bit. But as you can see, we've got one over near Anvil Square, one down at the Cuddle Team Leader Head, and we've got one over to the west of Slappy Shores at that little autumnal area that's over there. We're going to head quite far south. I think the best way to do that would arguably be to use a motorbike, maybe. So, if we go and use a motorbike.
and advice for the other bits of the quests. You can pretty much do every quest in one game. So the first quest uh, with all four stages, it's all around the same area. It's north of the Citadel, which is where the actual Rift Gate was being constructed. So if you remember where that was, it is the tower to the north of the Citadel, which I'll show you on the map in a second. Um, if you go to that tower, that is where your Rift Gate is, and all four stages of your first quest are in that area. So all you need to do is head there, it's around there, all four stages are around there, and as long as you don't die, you should be alright doing that one. The second quest, Aiding the Rift Warden, um, they all are around the Hidden Henge, which is northwest of Faulty Splits. So again, I will pull that up on the map now, and I'll show you guys where I'm on about. But if you head there, it should be fairly simple for you to go and do all four. You've just got to do the... The only one that's not in that area, pretty much, is the first one. You might have to walk a little bit to go and get your brazier first before you then go and do the sensors and the cosmic monitor. The third one is a little bit harder. You start it off to the southwest of the citadel at that little peninsula by the little castle there. And then you do have to run across the map to get all three in the same match, um, which are southwest of the Citadel, in Anvil Square, and east of Anvil Square. I suggest doing the one in Anvil Square last, because Anvil Square does generally seem to be quite a busy location to go to. As for the third and final, uh, this fourth and final quest, you're seeing me do that now, so... That was quite ominous, I must say. Um, we got the new Peely's Thunder. So, as you just heard, very ominous warnings from the Amy fragment. So, bear in mind that that isn't the actual Amy, that is just a fragment of her. Very ominous warning that was. They're all, they're all different now. As we speak, they change. Um... I'm assuming you guys can work out who that's referring to, but we will find out when we get the other two pieces. So let's go and grab them. Or oh, let's not, because apparently this tree is going to be completely in the way. We're going to head down southeast towards the Cuddle Team Leader Trap. Honestly, I can't tell, but I think that running might actually be quicker. <laughs> that truck is unbelievably slow. We are almost definitely going to take some storm damage on this one, but... We're going to grab this Deku Smash first as well, because... It's always useful to have one of those. If we use this zip line here as well, that should cut some of the distance for us, so... And we've also got ourselves a Falcon Scout. New item. I really quite enjoy the Falcon Scout, actually. We're going to take ourselves some storm damage here to go and grab this item. There are motorbikes here that we can use to then get out of the area, but we're going to head into the mouth of there, which is where our second piece is. Oh dear. So it sculpts his existence anew, a fate worse, well, 
a, a fake dark would be unimaginable. Um, as I'm sure you guys can probably tell, that is disgusting. The scientist. Um, you will see, obviously, in the next one. As you guys just saw there, that's how you use the Falcon Scout. It's quite simple and easy to use, but at the same time, other people can use it and other people can shoot it down. So, when you use it, make sure that you're hidden away so that you don't get seen and killed. But also, be very, very careful how you use the Falcon because the Falcon can be shot at. Let's go grab ourselves this third and final Amy fragment. Find out a little bit more about the fate that the seven are being subjected to. find the scientist, but will we find him in time to save him? What could be worse than the fate imaginable if it's rewriting his existence anew? Well, what we remember is that they were taken by the Herald. The Herald's metal took the Seven from us. So, what exactly could this mean for the Seven? What I personally feel like it means is that the Seven are being corrupted by the Nothing to serve the last reality. Could this mean that the origin restores his original title of the Cube King? Potentially. So could we see the return of the Cube King? I wouldn't put it past Epic to do that. Um, what could happen to the scientists? Will we save any of them in time? I don't really know, I'll be honest. But obviously now we do have to wait for part three. Additional quests are coming in two weeks, so um, they're coming on Tuesday this time rather than Wednesday, so we'll get part two, uh, no, part three, sorry, on the 12th, uh, not the 12th, the 12 days on the 31st of January. So we've got to wait for the 31st of January to get ourselves the, uh, brand new um, part 3 quests. And as for now, uh, I've demonstrated how to use the Falcon Scout. As you can, guys can see, the Falcon Scout is um, quite useful in terms of locating different people and stuff. But as you can also see, the Peely's Plunder doesn't update like the old maps sometimes did. So if your loot is in the storm, unfortunately it is now in the storm, you cannot get it back. So make sure to get it before it gets trapped in the storm if you want that loot. For now... I think we need to be a little bit careful around the Citadel, to be honest. Find a trap down here. Alright.
<laughs> I'm gonna use my little falcon to bait the Aether Champion. And it seems that the falcon is bugged. We returned back, but we are kind of soft locked now. So, epic. Epic, you may need to fix those falcons. But with that in mind, guys, that's it for this little review and summary and look back on Oathbound Part 2. Um, obviously, as I say, we will get part three on the 31st of January, so I will be covering that here on the channel. And as well, Unusually Utilitarian. Um, easy quests, I covered them in the previous video, so if you need help with any of them, go and check that video out. With that in mind, guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it informative, enjoyable, and fun to watch. And I will see you all in the next one.